Hi guys and welcome back to Fly TV. Ska jag inte säga. <laughs> ja, börja bra. Hi guys and welcome back to Thai TV. That's a much better beginning than Fly TV. I hope you enjoyed the last videos. I'm Nicholas Bauer and the topic of today is going to be um, a quite simple fly. And if you're only going to learn to tie one style of pike fly, this is the fly um, I would definitely tie. Quite simple to tie. It's not really consuming of a lot of materials. You can basically play around with different different colors and a little bit different um, styles. But it's basically one simple pattern that has grown over probably 10 years for me. And it's just one really good go-to uh, fly. This is a color, we call it the dirty roach, or I call it the dirty roach. And this one has a glow-in-the-dark flashaboo inside, uh, which is working really, really good for this pattern. Um, it's not really glowing, but it helps to pull the light down into the pattern and reflect it into the other materials, which is working really, really, really good stuff. And actually, it was a good friend of mine, Johan Linquist. his name is Pike Teaser on Instagram. He tied the first one with the glow in the dark, uh, this style, and it's been catching a lot for him and for me. So, um, really good tip, and uh, check out your one. Uh, what, what you also can do with this pattern is that you can kind of tweak it in a very, very easy way. You probably saw the kicker 2.0, where we had a magic head underneath. Um, that's the R14. So, if you want this pattern to push much more water than it is doing at this like we're going to tie it now, you can just push a magic head under there. Or if you want to do, we're going to tie another pattern a little bit later. So as soon as this is released, yeah, we're going to leave a link up in the corner here. But this is the same style of fly, but uh, instead of having a magic head or a bucktail collar here, I have a, a popper head that is tied uh, diver style, uh, just so you can have that fly really, really hoovering and not sinking down at all when you stop it. It's just going to stay completely flat. So, same style of pattern, but a lot of variations and a very, very good go-to fly. So, stay tuned. As normal, the Bauer Pike Rig. This is um, the Partridge Universal Predator X. Uh, I tied this pattern on a 4.0 or a 6.0. Uh, this one is tied on a 4.0 here. And this one on a 6.0. So the difference is not huge, but uh, it will be uh, a slightly smaller fly, uh, slightly easier to cast. And um, so if you are a beginner and you're not going to, you're not really good at casting and you're not really good at handling wind and windy situation, uh, tie it on a 4-0 and fish it with large dragon tails. Um, it's going to be a, overall a smaller pattern and it's really simple to cast and it's these tails, they don't create a lot of noise or not, they're not taking the wind as bad as the bigger ones are, but they're not pushing that much water either. So good if you're a beginner or the water is really cold and uh, you want to trick those really tricky fish. Otherwise, my go-to uh, size is on a 6.0, uh, size 1 in the back or a size 2 in the back, and then a dragon tail in size XL. That's really, really my my go-to size. And uh, like a general thinking, the size of your palm is actually a really good size for pike flies. So stop talking and let's tie. Start tying. Um, this is the Bauer Pike Rig. If you want to know how to tie it, you can click in the link up here and you will have a description how to tie it. But um, the only thing here that is not in that one is the new fly dressing two millimeter glow in the dark bead, which is just, I like it. It's a really nice effect on the fly here. And then it's a 45 uh, to 50 pound single strand titanium wire into a 6.0. So that's basically the basic setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with putting some uh, glue in the back here. As normal, we're trying on the uh, tech stream uh, power thread, 100 denier. If you are a beginner and uh, or you're just a really strong guy and not really used to tying, you can go up to 150 denier thread, uh, which is basically impossible to, to break. So we're going to tie this fly basically going from light color to a darker color. It's not a really dark fly, but it's um, I want it to go in that, uh, that way. So we're going to keep 
uh, using a very light tail, so it's going to be white bucktail uh, with some glow in the dark and some mirage as flash only in Magnum. And then we're going to do a body, and then we're going to do two small bucktail colors, which we're going to mix in two colors. But the first one is going to be very simple. It's going to be a white one. Um, as normal, bucktail. Try to find the one that has a lot of air inside and also um, uh, long and nice straight fibers. Uh, we're going to use it for the tail, so we don't need that um, flare effect that much. So we can use the effect from the, the higher up on the, on the bucktail. It's normal, take all the short fibers away. It's always hard to say exactly how much you want to be here, but if you want to do a bulky fly, take a little bit more. If you want to be a little bit more sparse dressed fly, take a little bit less. Uh, what I want this bucktail to do is to cover the tip of the hook here and also the fast attach that's in the end here. So like a centimeter uh, behind that is a good thumb rule. So try to have nice secure place here with not too many thread wraps. And then we're going to take this material on your left hand, push it through so you get the material all around the hook. I hope it is like that. Yeah, it's a good way. Then you go one, two, three gentle wraps and then you pull with a straight bobbin. So it flares out like that. Then you work with the thread towards the hook eye, uh, just gently through the material like that. Uh, make sure that the material is all around the hook. Take a dubbing needle and just make sure that these fibers are on equal size of the hook here. Then we go back again. Take a hair clamp. It's a really good tool. And then try to get, cut all these fibers off. Or away actually. Try to taper them a little bit so they are not too bulky and too straight here. So now we got a good position here to um, put the flashaboo in. And as I said, we're going, only going to run Magnum flashaboo in the back. There's two reasons for that. I like that a little bit more. Um, the reflection they get is more like a, a like a flash tail, so it becomes a little bit more profile in the back. And uh, the second thing with the Magnum Flashable is that it doesn't really tangle um, in the stinger here. Um, so try to use a little bit wider Flashable in the tail and, and smaller Flashable in the head is uh, usually a very good way to do it. And we're going to run, uh, this is the new one here, or new since a year back. It's a mixture between uh, Mirage and Glow in the Dark from Hedron. So we're going to run maximum 10 fibers of each here. So if there's too many fibers that are not Glow in the Dark, I usually just pick out a few extra. But uh, it's nice to have uh, at least four or five strands that are Glow. And then we're going to run the normal Magnum in Mirage. It's a really, really cool color. And uh, what I like with this color is also that it adapts to the surrounding material. So if you're running olive, it's going to give flashes that are basically a little bit olive. And this material com combined to the uh, glow in the dark, it makes that effect that it the glow in the dark keeps the material, keeps the color or keeps the light in the fly actually. And then the, um, the mirage is so, so bright and so flashy that it actually makes the fly almost glow when it comes down there. I don't know if that makes sense, but you'd have to live with that explanation. Just tie one and try it out. Uh, flip it together. Cut in middle. Let's make it in half. Taper all the ends. So they are uneven. Make sure that you have a nice mixture, which I actually had right away here. And then you're going to divide this bunch into two equal size uh, of material here. And then we're going to tie this in, so we tie it in uh, almost 50-50. I just want it to be barely a little bit longer in the back. And um, 
too, not too long because then the tail is going to be tangled up, but it should be actually like a few centimeters longer than the stinger and the existing material here. So try to spread it around. One uh, gentle turn here with the thread, we grip, grip the material, secure that, make sure that they are nice and evenly spread here, which they're not. Just give them a little bit of help here. Like that. And then we fold the material. And when you're tying with flashable, it's always very important to fold the material because that's what makes the whole position here and the whole base of the fly very, very strong. So there we go. Take this hair clamp up here. You can see that we have a fairly nice spread here. Just gonna need to add a few on the belly. Not too many, but we take half of that existing bunch here. And we're just gonna tie that in on the belly. Try to spread those fibers half on it one side and half on the other. One try to get away here, so I'm just gonna add that in here. A good way if you're having a hard time getting material in like this, you can take a fiber like this, keep the, the bobbin uh, straight down, take the fibers and just pull them in like that. Then the, the weight of the thread is gonna hold that fiber down and it's very easy to just continue starting to wrap it forward. So if you have a hard time getting a material to stick on your fly, it's a very good tip to do it. So we're just gonna fold those over. Gently push it with your thumb. And then we go to the top of the fly again. Make a few nice strong wraps. So basically that's the tail, a little bit longer and a lot of glow in the dark material here. A little bit of super glue to make the fly strong. And now we're gonna do a body material here. This is the uh, Textream Long Hair Holographic. This is a really cool color called UV Olive. Um, Normally when I do this at home, I wrap all this off and hold it in my hand so you don't have to cut off pieces and have waste material. But um, now we're gonna do it a little bit the uh, old fashioned way here. Make sure that the fibers as normal are facing the floor. Tie it in at an angle with the tips pointing towards the floor. Then we're gonna wrap it so we have like a centimeter uh, of space here, uh, because we're gonna need to make another bucktail collar, and then we're gonna make the head. So we need a little bit of space here. So wrap this forward. Use your left hand to fold the tips back the whole time. Uh, keep holding a little bit of pressure on the material so you have a nice and strong fly. And that's also very important that you glue this part here because when you've had 50, 60 fish on this fly, um, this body material will break, but you can still have a very, very good fly that you can continue fishing with if you have made all these gluings the right way. So we just tie this material off. So if you take all that material and put it in your hand, you're not gonna be wasting materials like this. Small, small trick, but it will save a little bit money and also the environment. So we got the tail here, so that's much lighter. We're going into the little bit darker color here, the olive. So basically that's, that part is done. Now I want this to be an, a nice transit from, from the lighter to a darker color. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna mix three different colors of um, bucktail. 
Um, we're going to do white, olive, but also we're going to do a fluorescent uh, yellow. It doesn't really show here, but if we hit it with UV light, you can see it's actually quite bright. So I just want that extra glow effect. So we're going to take a few strands of each. Um, now you can use hairs that are a little bit further down uh, from um, the bucktail because you want to have a little bit more air because we're going to hollow tie this or reverse it. Take the short one out, put it there. Same here, we're going to run olive. Take a little bunch here. Take all the short fibers out from the material. And when you mix this, you always mix a little bit more than you need. I usually tie flies like this, I tie them two and two. So then I mix all the material for, um, for uh, two flies. Because otherwise you always waste some material. Which is unnecessary because it's quite expensive materials to use. So equal amount, like 33% if you want to be that thorough of each. So it's uh, white, olive and um, fluorescent yellow. So we're going to mix these together. It's like rolling something together here. I'm not going to say that on TV or YouTube, but... Uh, so you kind of give them a good mix to start with. Then you take a normal comb. And then you hold them by the tips and then you start kind of rolling this between your thumb and your finger at the same time as you are combing it together. Uh, you do it a few times, you change the position and you start doing it uh, the other way. What you can see now is that the material is starting to mix up really good. And the more you do this, the better mix you can get. And this actually can make a really nice uh, like mixtures and whatever you want to do here by doing using this technique. Very simple, it takes, takes a few times and then you master it. So by now you're going to see the effect here of putting some, um, some fluorescent yellow in here. You can see it has a fluorescent effect into it, which I just want on the second bucktail color. Let's clean the table here a little bit. And then we're not going to use all this material. We're going to basically use half of this. So we just want to stack this in your hand a little bit. You can actually stack it on the table too, so you get all the, the ends where you cut off. You want them to be as equal as possible like this. You can use a hair stacker, but it's very simple to do it like that. So as I said, we always do too much. So that's the right amount, not too much. Stack them a little bit. And then we're going to tie these forward. So now you want to have like yeah, a finger, your small finger here, um, like a centimeter of space. The more beginner you are, the more space you need. Once again, hold them with your left hand. Try to get the materials all around the hook. I think it's hard to see here, but um, by, by get, trying to get the hook in the center. Once again, one, two, three, gentle turns, and then you pull. If the materials flare like this, uh, then you have the right bucktail, which con contains air, which is hollow. So it really moves out like this. And this is what we want so we can get that nice hollow tie effect. Continue working with the thread through the bucktail here a little bit. Give a good pull on every turn. Make sure that we have materials all around. As you can see here, I kind of missed some, which happens. And what you do then is you just take some from that bunch you had there. And just put it flat on the belly here. Oh, and just add those fibers and that's also 
if you want to do a different belly color, that's how you do it. Take that material, you can take that clamp away from the tail. And we try to cut this as nice and tidy as possible here. If you want to have a lot of volume in the fly, but also add weight, then you can leave most of this material because it's going to work a little bit like a, a medicad or a, a support for it. But I want this fly to be simple to cast and also um, have a profile that I can kind of decide with the eyes. So we make sure that this is nicely spread around. We take a reverse tool or a pencil or whatever you want with a hole inside. You lift this, gently push this back, grab it with your fingers. You can actually redo that. And then you start pushing these down a little bit. Just how it was invented by Mr. Popovich. So now you can see here, actually, this is quite important here. You can see the thread is, is um, coming down like a few millimeters inside the bucktail here. And if you're going to go with the thread now and go like this, you're going to go over the bucktail, which you don't want to do. So you want to go with this thread straight and then forward. And what that does is it doesn't grab any materials underneath here. So I'm happy with that. Just make a few turns here. To secure that, we got that angle. You don't want it to be too, too um, standing too much up because then the materials is going to fall into it. But you don't want it to be too flat either because then you don't going to get that effect of the volume it's going to push. So pretty happy with that. I know I'm, it's going to go back a little bit more with the, the glue and the thread wraps I'm going to put now. So I'm not going to push it anymore. Just put some glue here in front of it on the thread wraps not over the material. We had a few strands of the uh, white material here uh, from the tail, so we're not going to waste those. going to tie those in. First, if you don't have that, we just, this was just a, they were lying around here, so I'm going to tie those in so we get those onto the fly. And then I want to use um, a little bit more, a um, little bit darker color. It's not actually a darker color, but it adds a lot of color too. So then I'm going to run glow in the dark in yellow. And I'm also going to dark glow some olive uh, flashable, uh, which is pearl dyed olive, which actually looks really nice like this. But when you put it in the water, it's just amazing color. So I'm going to run that as a mixture. And then I'm going to run some... Um, some hair. This is a Nayat. This is what we call a Bowers Premium Nayat. So it's a Nayat that it's been uh, worked a lot with and uh, it's also a very nice quality of material. This is a natural hair and uh, it gets that little bit effect that it, it's translucent but it just adds nice color and nice movement to the fly. So a little bit of that and then some flashable. First, glow in the dark. We're not going to run too many, uh, but we're going to run, I want to run four glow in the dark and then additional four of the uh, mixture here. So it's four strands glow in the dark and uh, four of the pearl one. So we're going to, once again, fold those together, divide it into half and taper the ends. And these we can actually tie in right away. We're going to tie them in almost 50-50, so maybe 60-40. Uh, try to spread these nice and evenly around here. So we can get a nice mixture here. Looks like we're getting somewhere. Let's see if we can get this looking good. I'm pretty happy with that. 
Yeah, you can be super thorough if you want to. I don't think a pike will see it. I think it's basically pike fly is about how they move. They're not overdressed and they're durable. So we're gonna make a few turns here. Uh, make a few thread wraps here so we don't get too steep slope because then the thread is going to fall down the whole time. So we're just gonna make a little bit slope there. So it's a little bit simple. And now you can see that this second bucktail collar has f gone down a little bit. So it has that rise, nice angle to it. And now we have a lot of glow in the dark materials here, which is going to help this fly keep that light even deep down or in very, very low light conditions. So now I'm done with the uh, Magnum Flushable. Now we're going to go over to uh, a little bit uh, thinner versions. So we're going to run some uh, olive here. And this is pearl dyed olive. Super nice color and even cooler in the water. So we're going to taper those a little bit so they are uneven. Run back again. And these I'm going to tie in basically 50 50. If we can get them 50 50 here, shouldn't be that hard. Like that. One thread wrap to hold the material. Try to spread it out evenly. And then we're just gonna fold this around here. I'm running basically most of the material on the top of the hook and down on the sides. Not too much material on the belly. So it's basically not 180 degrees, but it's more of a 240 degrees spread here. And uh, because I want that uh, fly to be basically most of it on the top of it. So like that. So what we're going to add here is a few strands of an IOT. And then we're gonna move over to the last bucktail collar here. So a few turns to secure that. We're gonna run some Nayot. Uh, take a bunch, not too many, just to have a nice color transit here. Put it away from the skin patch. Then you take the uh, comb or brush, brush. You take all the under fur away from it. So you have a nice and uh, s not that thick um, wing. It's just going to be very lightly, a nice color to it. it. Has a nice taper too. So you're going to take a comb and kind of make it out nice and evenly spread. You make sure it's not too long. So you don't want this wing to be longer than the fly, but you want it to be fairly long back here. So nice and evenly spread, uh, gentle thread wrap. And we put some power to that and we can release that. And you can see it's basically nice and evenly spread around more than 200 degrees around the hook there, which is basically what I want. Gonna go a few thread wraps up and down. Then we're gonna cut all the existing materials away here. Like that. Go backwards. So now we have a little bit less than a centimeter here. So just secure with some super glue because basically this head here is going to be naked. Now we're going to put the last bucktail color on here, um, which is going to be uh, a mixture of white and olive. And we're going to cover that with some ripple eyes and some predator dubbing 
and uh, we're basically done after that. So we do a mixture here. This one we have to save for the next fly. So we're going to do find some nice long olive here if I can do that. And we have some nice olive. Once again, use it from the lower part of the bucktail. Put it on the table. I'm going to try to find some nice white here. Getting well used. Ah, oh, should have brought some more white. Now we can find some more. Take all the short fibers away, just as normal. Put it on the pile of olive. Roll it together. Once again, hold it almost at the tips. And just start combing it together while you twist it gently between your fingers. Move your position. And then once again, just start combing it. And you can see the material is getting a nice mixture. Just give it one more good mixture here. And then we're gonna be done with that. So we're just gonna stack this a little bit. Get a little bit more space here. So we're just gonna hold it gentle between your three fingers and then you just stack it on the table. And you get a nice and straight bunch like that. So now we have a nice mixture. It's olive and white. So I'm not gonna use the whole of this because it's going to be too much and the fly is just going to be too bulky. Add that to that bunch. If you want to do basically a fly that is uh, light, if you want to do a bucket color actually, what I would say, that it's light on the inside and dark on the outside, you just have to think a little bit uh, backwards when you hollow tie it. So you put the darker material on top and um, the lighter material on the outside. So make sure the glue is dry. Once again, try to gentle get the bucktail all around the hook. Get a gentle turn, try to get the material all around the hook. Two, three, and then you pull. And hopefully you get some type of result as I'm getting here. So as you can see now, it has a nice spread and the hook is in the middle there. And that's basically how I want it. Work a little bit backwards here because we don't want to take too much of the space forward. So I like to go with the thread back instead of forward. You can sometimes get the clamp here. Depends on how much space you have left. Cut all the fibers away here. We have a few ones that actually took a, a wrong path here, but we can, we can leave those or we can just be a little bit picky and cut them off. So, so I'm happy with that. That, this one is done, so we're just gonna reverse this one and dress it a little bit. So lift the material up here, push the material over, gentle or gently push it over with your fingers like this. And then you can take that hair clamp if you want to. And once again, Go with the thread straight and then forward to build up a little color here. It's gonna be a, like a support for the bucktail. A little bit 
super glue. Like that. And then we're just gonna make a gentle mix. Ooh, sharp hooks here. So we're gonna make a gentle mix of some different type of flashable here. And then we're gonna put some ripple ice fiber into the Predator dubbing. So we get that really cool effect. So it's really glows. But first we're gonna put some, material, some flashable here. And uh, what I like to run is, once again, some uh, flashable pearl dyed olive. So it's gonna be around eight to, I'm just gonna move that one away. Eight to 10 strands. We're gonna use Polar Flash. This is a really nice gold color that I think is really usable. It's like an antique gold. I put that on the same pile. What else do I usually put? Some, yeah, holographic olive. A few strands. But of course, this is all up to you and maybe what you have at home, but keeping in that color spectra um, could actually run. No, I'm not going to add anything else to it. So it's basically going to be what I'm going to run. So it's uh, three different colors. And they're all in the same theme here. So what you have to be a little bit careful now is that the polar flash we have here contains a little bit hair. So it can be a little bit tricky to mix. So be a little bit gentle and use the comb where the uh, um, points here are wider apart. Otherwise it has a tendency to tangle a lot. So I'm not gonna waste that one. So just try to mix it apart like that. Make sure that the ends are tapered. And we're gonna bring this guy over again. So we're gently gonna try to spread these all around. Tie it in 50-50. So make like a carpet here, so it's not just a one big bunch. Try to spread it evenly like this when you tie it in. It's gonna be much more simple. So 50-50. Try to get it almost around the whole hook. Or what, like I did all around the hook. So we're gonna try to fold these material over. A little bit tricky sometimes. Actually it can work quite well to use your reverse tool to grip them. Try to get them evenly spread here. I had one guy doing something stupid here. I don't know which one. And one that's double here. I'm just gonna cut that up. I think I have a nice spread around here. I have one fiber that's double here, so, oh, I didn't. So now we have it, um, did some mumbling there, but now we're done with that. So we have a nice spread here. We actually have a really nice fly. Uh, as you can see, you can do this with a darker head or a lighter head or whatever you want to do, but it's just a super simple, basic um, flashable slash dirty roach pattern. And it's going to help you get that light uh, a lot down into the fly. As you can see, it's almost glowing from the inside. So once again, we're gonna put that hair clamp over. Make sure that this area here, where we're gonna put the predator dubbing and ripple eyes, is not too steep. So the thread is not as too much of a hill here because then the material is just gonna fold forward. So try to build up so it's as with the thread, so it's as straight as possible. Just a little bit, little bit glue here on the thread. So um, you have a nice and secure place. And now we're gonna run ahead of predator dubbing and ripple eyes. And what I like when um, you put the ripple eyes into the pattern is we can get a close up here. You can really see like the fibers are, looks like they're inside the fly here. 
and it just becomes super cool. So it's not too bright, but still you get that effect into. And the tan colored predator dubbing becomes very, very translucent in the water. So it just becomes like a, a shimmer, uh, which looks awesome. So, so we're going to start with the darker color underneath, and then we're going to run the lighter color on top, uh, which is a little bit different, but that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to run two colors of um, predator dubbing. We're going to start with the new color called Lizard Bush, uh, which is a really nice green mixture, which is fluorescent. And then we're going to end it up with tan on top of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this Lizard Bush, put it on the table, nice and Gentle spread it up like this. Probably a little bit too much, but then we take some ripple fiber. This is light olive, super nice color. Just gentle, gonna put them over like this. Not too many, which I probably did now. Then we're gonna kind of fold this together and start kind of working with this a little bit here so we get these ripple-ized spread into the dubbing. That's not the easiest part, but we're just gonna basically get them in there a little bit. So we can do this in one tying session instead of trying to incorporate every single strand here. So now I have this bunch here where the fibers are inside. So we're gonna tie this in. Um, I think this is a little bit too much here, we're gonna take that out. So we're gonna tie this in basically 70% back and 30% uh, forward. Try to get this all around the hook. If you don't wanna do this in one shot, you can do it in numerous shots, um, doesn't matter. Um, trying to get the material to grip the thread and all around so, th so you can see that the material is coming towards you here. And then you make one good turn and a few strong turns so you secure it and now you should have the material going all around it like this. Can I actually take this hair clamp away here and then you just start combing these fibers like this so you make sure that it looks nice and pretty. I take the other ones, comb them towards you and try to spread them around the hook eye like this, evenly. Then you just fold the material back, like this, and you go with the thread forward. So that, that's the, uh, the lizard. Take the uh, hair clamp there, once again. And now we're going to prepare the tan. I'm gonna do the same, we're not gonna have as much of that, we're just gonna have like a gentle shimmer on top of this. So uh, predator dubbing, tan. And then we're gonna do ripple ice in sand. A really, really nice color. I love this color. Just gonna put a few strands on this onto the predator dubbing here. Problem is when you love something too much, you just kind of overdo it probably ended up with too much again. Once again, kind of mix that together, fold it into a pile, try to get these fibers basically spread around like this. Pretty happy with that, I think. Do it one more. So you see you have a cool color there and it's actually slightly fluorescent too. So we're just gonna do the same thing as we did with the previous bunch. So you can go with the thread. Here you can actually push this material quite tight to the hook eye because the fibers are so thin so they don't build up any volume. But, um, um, well, here we go. Tied in 50-50. Once again, try to spread it all around. So with your fingers, trying to kind of push it around. And with the thread, you do the last of the work. So there we go. I can actually show you it's hard to show. See if I can do it like that. I don't think we can do this, but as you can see, when I spread this around here, 
I get the fibers to go all around it like that. And when you have done that, you basically get the material covered all around it. So that's what you basically want to do. So, so a lot of, uh, but it's a good tip to get the material all around. So get it all around, get the material to, to grip it. A few turns. I can take this away. And once again, you go in with your comb here. Gently comb it around. Comb that towards you. And now you have to be a little bit more careful here because you want this thread to come between these wraps here. So, so it looks nice and you don't get that thread coming too much in between here. Looks good, happy with that. Give this a good brush here. So we get all the materials nice and mixed together. Fold that. Take another one which is not full of material. There we go. So now we can see we have this nice and evenly mixed. So we're just going to make as few thread wraps as possible here. So um, we're just going to put some super glue on the thread here because we're going to glue two eyes on this and also finish the head with um, some um, UV resin. So we don't need too many thread wraps here. Try to get all those fibers away. Just a few wraps, make one secure knot and pull that thread towards the tail. We can cut that off. So we have uh, tied quite simple fly, but a very, very, very uh, durable fly, but also a very good go-to pattern, which you can kind of as I said in the beginning, you can kind of tweak it with different colors, different variation, and it's just really, really a good pattern to, um, to work with whatever you want to do. You get a really nice glow from the center of it, and um, a simple fly to cast, really durable, and it's so fishy. It catches so much fish. So, we're going to glue eyes on this. When you glue them on, you need to use epoxy, because if you want that fly to be really durable, that's the only way to do it. We're going to use the epoxy eyes, 9mm from fly dressing. This is the uh, fluo red. Uh, these are US made, uh, which is a big difference from the Chinese ones. These are a little bit stickier, so and also the quality is much higher. But the thing is with the, the American made ones, are when you glue them on and you take this um, hair clamp, they don't uh, fall off because these are a little bit uh, kind of sticky. I don't, it's hard to say, but they're a little bit different surface, uh, which helps these to stick on much easier, which is, in my opinion, a big difference. So once again, mix some epoxy. Dragon tail paper, that worked good. So five minutes epoxy, equal amount of um, the resin and the hardener. Make the table a little bit more easier to work with. And we mix these two together. So when you put the um, epoxy on, I like to kind of comb the material a little bit back. You can moisture your finger or you can dip it in a glass of water or something. But just try to get those fibers down so you don't have any small fibers 
microfiber sticking up because it's really simple for the glue to attach to those and and uh, jump into um, the fly. So put a um, area that is slightly bigger than the pupil of the eye and try to um, work with the with your dubbing needle so you're spreading the uh, the epoxy out without kind of like pushing or pulling the material just spreading it out and then you can take it straight and kind of push the material or push the glue into um, the head here which is going to make it really strong so we're done with that So then we take the eye and what I like to do is I kind of like lean it against the hook if you can see it like that and then you just fold it straight down and then you kind of massage it into the epoxy oh, I'll tighten that a little bit and then we do the same thing on the other side so take the eye and kind of fold it into it and then uh, you just give these like a good massage so you get the glue to attach to them and also get into the material. Make sure that they are straight so they don't have a fly that look like it's really off. And then I just take one of these hair clamps and I attach it nice and straight like that. Um, so you just want to make sure that these are straight. And then you attach it like that and then you lift this up so you get it and then when this epoxy becomes uh, now they're still workable but in like one minute it's going to be uh, starting to cure much harder then I take this clamp off so I can get a little bit more volume to the head but if you want that head to be very tight and also cut the water like a jerk bait then you can leave it like this but if you want that fly to push a little bit more water then you want to take this uh, then you want to take this hair clamp away. So now we're gonna make five minutes disappear like this. We're back. That was five minutes. Quick one. It's like a cooking show this. So basically what I did what I did those past uh, five minutes was that uh, when it was like one minute into the cure I took the clamp away here so I get that nice spread to the eyes otherwise you're going to have it quite tight together. So the only thing we're going to do now is going to put some UV glue here uh, just to kind of fill up the gap here and uh, make it a little bit more strong and durable. Uh, I'm going to run two different ones here. I'm going to run the Gulf Thin, one, uh, Thin Man. It's, uh, it's a resin that is, has a lighter viscosity so it goes into the material. And then we're going to do a fluorescent red uh, which has uh, to get a, like, a nice uh, kind of a trigger point here in between the eyes and I'm also going to cover that with clear just to get that nice uh, feeling to it so first we're going to do a little bit uh, of the uh, clear here gonna basically push it into the material a little bit so uh, it becomes nice and strong good thing with uh, UV glue is you can basically work with it. And then when you're happy, then you cure it. So put it on each side here now. So I just make sure that I like the angles of the hair, which I do now. And then we cure it. You see it's smoking a little bit, depending on it's hardening, really good. So that was the first coat. Now we're going to put a little bit of the uh, red uh, on the uh, between the eyes. Oh, come on. It's childproof here. So, so I did a thin coat here first with the uh, clear, and then we're going to put a little bit red here. kind of make this nice and neat. 
secure that. And then we're going to add some clear on top of it. And this is not something that is soft now. This becomes really hard as epoxy. Um, but if you want it to be soft, you can go for the Flexman. And you have something that's very soft, more uh, of a rubbery feeling to it, like we did on the uh, top water stuff. So we're just gonna add some of the clear the second coat to get that nice head to it. I'm just gonna clear cure that. And we're good to go. And there we have it. The only pike fly you ever need to tie. <laughs> Not really. Just add uh, whatever tail you want to. Uh, I like to fish these with, as I said in the beginning, fluorescent tails. And I fish these a lot also with a gold tail. Uh, it's a really, really good combination. But you can play around with whatever color you want. They work really, really well. So we're gonna turn off the lights here and you're gonna see the effect how they glow when it's dark. Work in progress. Ooh. Here you can see the glowing effect on these and uh, what I like is that the uh, glow comes basically from the inside of the fly and uh, this is going to help this um, fly um, keep the light deep down. You can see that trigger point we did in between the eyes and uh, it's just a super cool pattern. Really glow in the dark. And here you can see how the fluorescent um, yellow tails also, uh, how bright they actually are. So give it a try. And uh, if you wanna win this fly with a tail, just leave a comment. And the guys and girls at uh, Canal Gratis will raffle it out for you. And uh, hope you catch a really big fish. Good luck. Don't miss to subscribe on um, Canal Gratis and of course on Instagram, Nicholas Bauer and Fly Dressing. Stay tuned for more shows.